it's about time. So you want to get to this person as quick as possible, and that's when everything's rolling through your mind. It can be quite intimidating. Although we're trained to this, it's never a good scenario to be in. Don't know whether I'm going to find someone at the bottom of the rocks or someone sitting there hopefully alive. Yeah, that's the uh, scariest part. Apparently another sign of life, but clearly he could be as unconscious. Copy that. We'll launch Jet C now. A man has fallen from 50 metre cliffs north of Bondi. With no road access, Chase and Will launched the jet ski. The panic was going through me, but then you kind of go into this final flight moment trying to save this guy's life and know that if anything's going to happen from here, it's on us. Troy and Hopper prepared for a possible resuscitation. So in this situation, we don't know what we're dealing with. The positive side is the person's still alive. We get them back to the beach and we can either revive them or get them off the hospital as quick as possible. The negative is the person is already deceased and they're on the rocks and there's not much we can do. Everything's about time, so you want to get to this person as quick as possible and that's when everything's rolling through your mind. I just don't know whether I'm going to find someone at the bottom of the rocks or someone sitting there hopefully alive. Yeah, that's the uh, scariest part. Let's go to St. George, guys. We're just up here now. Copy that. That's all the police are asking. They just want you in the area. Yeah, so the update, they're trying to locate where the patient is at the moment. They've got the police helicopter up there. They're looking. But it's so rocky and that round there, you could be between the rocks. It can be very hard to see from the water. And also up on top of the cliff can be hard. Such dangerous conditions because it's so choppy and there's so much going on trying to evaluate what's safest for us and what's safest for this person. Paul Eyre finally spots the fallen man. Right in behind that rock there. Yeah. Tragically, the man has not survived. If anything, they'll winch the guy up. If it was in the water, we would have brought him back. So probably a police rescue retrieval now. Yes, Chase, uh, the police have just said you can uh, come back and they, you're not required anymore. The whole is going to winch out. Unfortunately, the person is deceased. The police now will take over. Uh, there's not much more we can do as lifeguards. It's never the best feeling when you get to come back to shore and know that someone's lost their lives, so it just feels helpless. It's the worst case scenario. You just wish someone saw it earlier or was able to help. This person's life is now in my hands. If I get there quick, they've got every chance of surviving. Come this way, please, It's very important to, to launch that jet ski properly. Clint, that day couldn't have launched us any better. First thing is going through my mind, you know, it's, it's part of the job and i got to do it, but I am still new down here. Do you want me to go up there with any equipment? Nah, not at this stage. We'll just stand by, see what Jess comes up with. Copy, mate. Where we went was eerie. I knew Jack was capable, but this is like the top of the food chain in rescues for us. could see everyone on the cliff. And I was like, this isn't good. Hey, uh, now, we've located the police. We can't see the bodies. Yeah, mate, uh, I've got a number of the informants, so just stand by, I'll give them a call. And then all of a sudden... Oh, 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 hey, I've got it, hey, I've got it. Hey, how about guys? Where's the body? This guy just pops out from behind a rock. Yeah, right, hey, what's his state? I was in shock. Hey, hey, are you all right? Can Jesse want to stay here, mate? How did this guy just survive this jump? The guy's alive. I don't know if he swam, jumped, but I've never seen anyone around that far. I'm going to send my lifeguard mate in to get you. I just climbed up on the rocks and I said, are you OK? Are you OK? What's happened? Jesse wants to stay here, mate. He goes, oh, nothing. I'm just, I'm just come here for a swim. Mate, 
mate. This bloke had just walked around the rocks. It was a, obviously a huge relief. Yeah, let's get him on the scan back here. But then a massive subtly coming up the coast. The helicopter and that one go before the wind hits. And wind out on the water just makes things a hundred times more difficult. We had this suddenly coming in, so we, needed, we know we needed to move quickly. There was waves crashing up against the rocks where he was. It's not just the man who needs rescuing. We had to get his back back on the ski because he's worried about his phone getting damaged. I knew the suddenly was coming. But this guy thought he was totally fine and he was just going to walk back. So he's refusing to get on the jet ski. It was just... Jesse moves the jet ski even closer. I had the jet ski at one stage literally centimetres away from the rocks. A hundred things could happen. Finally, the man agrees to take the plunge. The question still remains. What was the man doing so far around the cliffs? Philip Pappas, originally from Greece, is bewildered by the fuss. We think someone think you jump off the cliff. No, I didn't. Yeah. Yeah. Really? So look, all these helicopters here now yeah. are here for you. Really? Uh, we think that someone jump off the cliff. <laughs> no, yeah, it does look like that. We had the Westpac helicopter, we had the Toll helicopter, police flying down Queen Elizabeth Drive. Everybody here for this one person that didn't know what he had done. I think we're looking for someone, I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea, yeah. There's great relief as Philip walks away unharmed. But the next day, the rescue chopper is back in the same spot. At about 10.30, the police helicopter just started hovering there. This helicopter keeps coming here, Hop. Bring Juicy here. Oh, they're taking someone home. The first thing that come straight to my mind was me and Jack. I missed it. That's the, that's the body there. Oh. Is that a windshield? No, oh, it's on the side. The stake's on the side of the chopper. It's on the side of the chopper. It's on the side of the chopper. I didn't look on the rocks because the guy was there, you know. I could have saved that person's life. But when police call the tower, the story takes another turn. The police station had said that there had been a suicide. That, do you reckon that's linked to anything yesterday? But the actual person that they were winching had jumped that day, not the day before. Bang. New one, yeah. They, I don't know if they well, must have watched him jump this morning, but she was like, nah, he definitely jumped this morning, this guy. It is eerie that someone jumped in the exact same spot as the report was the day before. She goes, she goes, this 100% was today. But obviously at the same time, it's a relief that we didn't miss it. Unfortunately, people do this and feel sorry for them and their families because it's an illness. Our bread and butter's lifeguards is doing the rescues down here on the beach, but unfortunately there's a dark side and that's body retrievals. Incidents including fishermen swept off rocks, general misadventure and suicide account for as many as a dozen body retrievals every season. The bodies can be bashed up. Uh, then also the families come down and you become part of the grieving process, which can be uh, quite horrific for the guys. It was a gloomy day with maybe five foot swell, just southerly winds, no one really around. We're about to pack up, I think it was about 6.30 and Azza received a call. Yep, in the water. Just good. I think the initial call was that there was a body of possibly on the rocks, possibly in the water. We didn't really know at that stage. Whenever someone's, you know, still hanging oh, on by yep. a thread, we want to yep. try and get there as quick as we can. In these moments, it's a quick but a very important decision as to who goes. Luke and Corey decide to leave 19-year-old Jethro behind. Jethro is still a trainee, so, you know, it's probably best not to send him into a scenario like that at the moment. 
somewhere inside me I wanted to go just just to be like hands on part of the team, but I haven't seen a, a dead body, which I'm happy about. So definitely having Corey and Luke who are much more experienced than I am going over there, it's better. The area we were headed to is five kilometers to the north of Bondi. It is very spooky, it's just these cliffs that have to be 30 meters. The water's dark, you know, there's a lot of sharks around there. So yeah, all sorts of things kind of go through your head as you're going around there. After 20 minutes battling the tough conditions, lifeguards close in on the location. We saw the chopper fly overhead and we got, you know, a kilometre or so away and we could see somebody winching down. Oh, they're winching. Uh, just hit a central. You got it. Mate, uh, can you see one three, sir? Mate, I think they're winching down at this person already. As we were approaching, we are probably about 200 metres away and the chopper had flown past us, located the person, and uh, mate, they winched down and straight back up again, probably within about 30 seconds flat. Yeah, mate, chopper seems to maybe be leaving. Can you just ring one three surf and confirm with us, please? Yeah, copy. Stand by, mate. Oh, they're going to land. They're landing, are they? Yeah. Yeah, Central the jet ski boys, they have picked the patient up and they're going up to the park, so head back. They took the patient from the water and landed up around Blorfus on a park up there where they were met with other paramedics. They started resuscitating, found out it's a, it's a young girl, a, a girl, so um, that's basically how it unfolded. Paramedics resuscitated the woman and she was taken to hospital. But sadly, she passed away 24 hours later. The precarious cliffs are popular amongst climbers. Surviving a fall from this height would be miraculous. It's impossible to tell whether the man is still alive. I wonder how far he fell from. No. Because that's a big drop, isn't it? Massive. Absolutely massive. What do you reckon? It's a good... Oh, 30 good. foot, isn't it? 30 foot, isn't it? 30 metres. I don't reckon police rescue or risk mention either in the wet, but they're gonna have to get him up somehow. Depending on how bad he is, mate, just bring him around here. That's what I mean, like, the boys will have to get him. There goes the chopper. There goes the chopper. A rescue chopper with paramedics aboard joins lifeguards and police. Uh, at this stage, we have a seriously injured male who has fallen from the top level of Bondi Golf Course. He's not in a real good way. The man still hasn't moved. The lifeguards have been an integral part of the whole process. They are actually in the water. They've been making assessments of the patient as the process has gone through, and they've been communicating what they've seen and what their experience is through to us, through the police, and through the Westpac's group. An approach from the water is deemed too risky. A paramedic is winched down to the accident victim. He's alive, but it's still unclear exactly what happened to him. So we'll just have to wait and see and the, the wash up what really happened. Finally, he's on a spinal board, then safely winched into the rescue chopper. You know what, I was riding out here today, and the first thing I thought, beautiful, easy day, and as soon as I thought that, straight away I thought, hang on, no way in the world, something's going down for sure. 